Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to go to Israel and Palestine. We're going to talk about uh, non-violence, and we're going to talk about uh, the work that has been done with uh, two activists who are uh, working in uh, be able to overcome the difficulties, help people to uh, go through and open the future to life of people. Welcome to Face to Face, to you, Rosa and Amer. How are you doing? So let's start with uh, with Rosa. Rosa, do you want to present yourself, introduce yourself, and then uh, we will go to Amer later. Uh, yes, of course. Hello. Uh, thank you for having us. So I'm Rosa. Um, I was actually born and raised uh, in Holland, in the Netherlands, uh, but I have Israeli uh, roots as well. And I made Aliyah, or I came to Israel when I was 18. Uh, and a month after I moved to Israel, uh, I joined the army. Um, so I served in the army for two years. Uh, and um, slowly but surely after the years after the army, um, I started becoming a lot more aware um, of the occupation of what Israel uh, does uh, to the Palestinians in the Palestinian territories in Palestine. Uh, and then I joined uh, Combatants for Peace. Um, yes, that's me. Great, thank you so much. For that. So, Amer, do you want to introduce a little bit yourself and then we will introduce, explain what uh, what is the work with Combatants for Peace? Hi, all. Uh, Nice to have uh, us here, like, thank you for all the efforts. Uh, me, I'm uh, Amir Filali, uh, I'm Palestinian, a refugee. Uh, I would belong for a city called Ramla. Uh, before, like, my family exploded from that and live in a Jericho, in a camp, like in a refugee camp. So I born in Jerusalem and I raised in uh, Jericho. And like, yeah, so actually to be a Palestinian, like since uh, since young and uh, telling and hearing all these stories uh, about my grandfathers and grandmothers about 48 and yeah, exploring this since being a child and leaving me like really wondering when I became a teenager about like a real solution and different solution and putting me more involved in this. What is, can you describe a little bit what type of work do you do with Combatants for Peace? Okay, actually I start work with Combatants for Peace since like six years. Uh, like I enjoyed uh, one of the uh, events. And then I became like a participating, participate with them more and more with workshop and nonviolent communi uh, communication and actions. Uh, And I was like for a while uh, a coordinator for a group uh, Jericho and Jerusalem. Uh, and now I'm like working with more uh, for speaking and organizing some events. Great. Thank you so much. Do you have uh, anything to add, Rosa, to, to what you do with uh, Combatant for Peace? Um, well, I've more recently uh, become more active over the last year mainly. Um, and I think there are the the lines of work uh, that we do is also educational uh, and speaking to groups of young people uh, of all kinds of different people also um, to talk about um, the conflict, to, to listen to each other, uh, also very much based on personal stories. Um, so that's one thing. Also, we do the uh, joint memorial service uh, each year um, for all the victims of the conflict, Israeli and Palestinian. Uh, so that's another thing. And furthermore, all um, either if it's protests or if it if it's actions in the in the field against the occupation, uh, physically uh, being there and and resisting in a nonviolent way. Uh, so yes. So let, let's go to the nonviolent aspect because I, I'm I'm not sure how you do it, guys, because it's it's a very conflicting relationship. It's a very and uh, I, I mean look very tense from 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 New York. And uh, how do you, what feedback do you get when you go to talk to people and when you do your presentation? What, what type of reaction and how do you respond to what people have to, uh, to say? No, as I was thinking, I think that uh, on the Israeli side, in general, there's a lot of um, uh, suspicion 
and a lot of kind of resistance to really listen to the other side, to be able to listen to the other side. Uh, I think um, there's a lot of generalization of the Palestinians and, and, and all these assumptions of who they are and what they want. Uh, but I think that when we meet face to face mm -hmm. and have someone um, or if, if one of the Palestinian activists is sharing their story with um, Israeli youth or, or other groups, that when it's a personal story, you can connect and you can listen uh, because you're, you're related to the human story in that. Um, so this is a way I think that uh, for these personal stories, through sharing experience, uh, that this resistance can be overcome a bit. Um, yeah, we, we do have a long way to go in that because I feel there's a lot of uh, ignorance in, in the Israeli society, a lot of, of not wanting to know uh, what's going on on the other side, not wanting to know what is done in our name. Um, but yes, we, we work on that. But, and you have two two main difficulties because you are not just working for non violence you are also a veteran and you were part of the military force in Israel. So how do you get the, the how the military institution react to what you are doing? Um, I don't feel that um, the military so much reacts directly to um, or and me being having been part of the army that I get any any direct reaction from that but when we are in the field and i know i've been a soldier i know what it's like and then all of a sudden we're doing a very peaceful protest we're standing at the side of the road and doing you know our non-violent resistance and then speaking out against the occupation and we're met with a lot a lot of violence um from police uh from the army and and i try to say you know i <laughs> What are you doing? We don't have to do this because uh, because I, I understand also what it's what it's like maybe for a soldier to stand there. But um, it's it's a very hard, um, yeah. How do you say um, contradiction? Because I know what it's like to have been on the other side. But then again, now meeting them again in another position, uh, there's a lot of violence. Uh, but also, I want to work for that young Israeli people don't have to be in a position of having to oppress other people, of having to stand in a situation where you have to be or, or where you're violent. So, uh, Amer, how do you how do you see uh, uh, for you um, a little bit the same situation? Where uh, how do you deal with uh, um, violence? How do you uh, promote nonviolence? How do you and 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 as a as a veteran, how do you uh, uh, face the the the, the veteran aspect of um, of that um, conflict? Yeah, actually. It's a bit, it's a bit difficult sometimes because like sometimes when I'm uh, trying to encourage people to come and like participate or uh, trying the different way that we are uh, creating like the a uh, open safety space for uh, each other to come and that we have the same like personal stories and like maybe some common a lot of common. Uh, bad experience from like hateness and the communities we came from. Uh, so sometimes people really like getting inspiring about what, uh, about what we are doing and keep participating with us. And sometimes actually it's difficult with uh, like other people who born also with this environment of hate and the circle of violence. Uh, so also like sometimes they react differently like for me with Palestinian like they seeing it's not working out and Palestinian Israeli will uh, never be interested in long-term peace and from the other side like the other uh, Israeli uh, like when we are protesting like peacefully uh, there were some cases that other Israeli shooting that like uh, talking about the other Israeli with us about calling them like shitar for the state of Israel and but yeah, we're trying to deal with all of this with uh, more understanding for them and understanding them position. And uh, like, sometimes we agree, we are not, sometimes we are not agree, but it's important to creating like a, a space to have dialogue and to talk like safe, open space. And, and when you say open space and dialogue, how, how, how do you see it? developing into the future how do you uh, do, do you see working with those organizations do you see uh the the the, the 
society itself be able to integrate uh, more space for uh, discussion after what happened in the, in the last few weeks uh, with the big conflict between uh, between uh, Israel and Palestine make us like more stronger and more having desire to creating more uh, safe spaces and more dialogue like after all this uh, conflict like we realizing how necessary that this is not the solution and how necessary the non-violent activities and non-violent communication it's really important and it's the only solution through that to bring justice and equality and people living together in this land in peace this is the only way uh yes no i i agree with amel um I, I believe that especially especially when situations get very tense um or like the last uh war that these are the times that we need to stand together and we need to say we are the people living in this land our destinies are tied together you know if you want it or not we, we are here together so um so especially in these tense times we stand together and we create um and also by working together uh, we create bonds of trust and of solidarity and we don't have to agree on every detail and every possible solution and on the whole political um, picture around it. But working together, standing in solidarity, trusting each other, I think this is a very uh, good beginning. And so it's a little bit more like a personal question, but how do you get the strength? How do you get the, the conviction? Because it's a really difficult work to to be able to... Uh, to stand uh, uh, against not just uh, the system itself and 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 the the, the destruction, but also to uh, friend families uh, who are criticizing, who are uh, uh, putting you down. And uh, so, how do you get support? How do you um, you uh, you develop yourself? Uh, for me. Um... I believe that for me, it's not only like, where do I get the strength from? I believe that being an Israeli, it is my responsibility to do uh -huh. this because we are <laughs> oppressing the Palestinian people and the things are happening in my name, if I want it or not. So I feel that it's very much my responsibility. If I want this all people between, you know, the river and the sea to live in equality, to, to have justice, to have freedom, then I have to step up and I have to, to do something uh, for this. Um, and yes, I get a lot of, of, of negative feedback, sometimes also from close friends, from, from family, from people close to me. Uh, but I, I try to emphasize, you know, our, our destinies are tied together and, and we shouldn't only dig in the past, but, but look at the future. What do we want here? How do we want to live here? Um, and that stopping the occupation also benefits the Israeli people. Like we both want to live here in safety. So yeah. that's how I try to react. Okay. Any, uh, I mean, you want to add something to this? Yeah, I want to say, like, uh, I think both of us, like the both side, we uh, really tired of this uh, circle of hateness and uh, violence. And, uh, like, I also, what make me, like, also more involved with this and even feeling more responsible that I, I had, like, a loser friend when I was uh, 14. And uh, what is make me like really every time, like maybe sometime losing hope or getting weak or, but always it's like give me strength uh, that I need to keep more working in my way with nonviolent uh, activities. Yeah, you start at 14. How did you end up starting to be active at 14? It's very young age. Yeah, actually, after that accident with like a friend of mine, like got a shot in demonstration, like from the IDF in his head, and he passed away. Like it was a uh, like big uh, struggling uh, and the trauma for me at that time of 14. But I found myself thinking that uh, I don't want to be uh, like a part of this continuance uh, circle of violence and insane and hate it, and I take it to another way of. Uh, uh, trying like to find a solution through non-violent uh, activities and and also like I want also mention like last uh, last uh, protest we had like uh, where I met Rosa for the first time uh, like 
also this is giving like a strength with Palestinian and Israeli and like standing together in solidarity and unity for equal and justice for all. Uh, and like it's been even a bit violence when uh, the army and police attacked us and it's really show a lot of solidarity with the combatants of peace uh, members and the standing together for even the like till the middle of the night till the last uh, prisoner get away. Uh, so like I think this is also a big source of uh, giving a strength and hope. So so to, so to break the cycle of violence, what, what will be your recommendation? What will you will ask other people to do to, because I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's no end. If, if everything is it's always uh, done with violence, it's just a cycle of, of non-ending uh, war and destruction. So what, what is your uh, recommendation? And most importantly, how do you share it to other people? What... Um, how do you uh, uh, try to to explain it to uh, to others? Go ahead, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, you want to talk? Um, I can try, yes. Um, to say for recommendations, because sometimes, you know, combatants for peace, it's it might be a, a small group uh, at the moment, but I believe that we should maintain the hope that uh, systems of apartheid and systems of, of oppression, uh, they can be uh, they can be one, like happened in South Africa. This can also happen here. Uh, there mm -hmm. can be freedom. Um, and and yes, it's it's step by step, and we stand together. And even in the smallest conversations, even um, I believe maybe Amir can can speak about this more. But in the last protest. Uh, where there were many arrests, even later on, there were conversations with the policemen about the policemen that arrested uh, the combatants for peace activists. And even in those conversations, small realizations were made, even though it's a very strange conversation between the, the guard and, and the one held in arrest for nothing. Um, but maybe, yeah, I, I wasn't, I was only waiting outside. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Through, through interactions, small realizations can be made and people start you know, on their on their path and they go home and they think even more and then they talk about it with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, like I want to add, like I, won, I was one of uh, the eight uh, uh, combatants for peace uh, members who like been arrested and I want to add to Rosa for sure, like during the conversation there, like that we had, like I'm really, uh, sure that we left a huge impact and like leaving uh, the prisoner guard uh, wondering after we left like it's really uh, give me a lot of hope that it could change and it could lift like a huge impact so you mentioned rosa the, the apartheid situation and then uh, south africa experience and connected to that uh and I remember the campaign myself doing it in Paris to, to end apartheid in South Africa. So what, what is your connection with the international level? Because um, I think it was a very important part of, of the apartheid movement was to be able to be able to spread all over the world and asking for South Africa to, uh, to change its political and, and social uh, discrimination. So how, how do you see the international um space being played and and what recommendation we will you ask for to for country and people who are outside of israel and palestine to do to really um uh, straighten the, the movement uh, i believe that diplomatic work can can go a long way uh, that if people in in other countries in the states in any other country uh, they they pressure, they write, they reach out to uh, to diplomats, to politicians, to speak up about uh, wrong situations like the house evictions in Sheikh Jarrah, uh, like the siege on Gaza, to speak out about this and to not be afraid to speak out about this. Um, so I believe that um, the more voices and the more uh, firm voices will be heard also from the international community that this can have a have a big impact. Yeah, I think I will uh, agree with uh, Rosa, and this is a 
real international support that we need, like in a diplomatic way and supporting more people who are doing this uh, non-violent activities and 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 so, what um, if we uh, if we had to do something at the international level? What will be the main action? Rosa, you mentioned diplomatics. Do you see any uh, other uh, um, type of activities that people can be doing um, in by themselves or supporting in one way or another, combatant for peace or anything on that direction? Um. I believe that just as we do here, even though here it may be in like a more uh, tense situation where Israelis and Palestinians from both sides meet and talk and listen, uh, but I believe that even besides the, the diplomatic work and the political work, which is very important to, to make a, a strong stand against these injustices happening here, um, that also people can meet the Israeli communities, the Palestinian communities abroad, um, can meet and talk and, and create, and also other people, not Israeli, not Palestinian, can, can make a base of support, a bigger movement, uh, to, have, to have a louder voice, um, to listen to each other, to share stories. Um, so, yeah. Um, actually, it could also with the supporting, the, like doing kind of uh, uh, interruptions with the Competence for Peace, with the other organization or movement and... Uh, like try to involve in our events and in our speakings or speaking tools also. And um, okay. um, what what you will ask the Israeli to do to to help uh, into um, stopping the 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 I mean the apartheid or, or the the blockage of of goods and the blockage of medicine and. And I know it was very complicated with the with the COVID and and the pandemic. So, what are you uh, asking to uh, uh, the Israeli community to to do to uh, uh, develop something in the right direction? Actually, with being uh, more aware about what the uh, Palestinian uh, suffering and uh, trying to end uh, this uh, ongoing uh, injustice and try to push like. Uh, on the government or like showing more solidarity with Palestinians, like also joining a uh, combatants for peace. Like I'm sure like it's a, a big challenge could be for Israelian, but also like to encourage them to come and involve more with the uh, non-violent activities and uh, a movement and organization who are calling for equality and trying to make a difference through non-violent uh, activism. Rosa, you have something to add to what just uh, Amir was saying? Um, first of all, I agree. Um, mm. And um, second of all, about the siege on, on Gaza and, and the last war, um, I, of course, the Israeli society needs to become aware of the suffering and of, of, of the situation in Gaza. Um, but I also think that now Israelis, from the Israeli perspective, start to realize more that each round of war is not solving anything. So people start getting this, like, we cannot just do another round of war and wait for another few years and do it again. Uh, so I think people become more and more aware that a solid and good political solution needs to be found instead of these, these wars all the time. Um, so I, I hope, or I am trying to see that there's a bit of a shift here in the awareness about this, um, that people see it's not solving anything uh, and that we need to find, um, yeah, find a better solution. So, I, I mean, it just, Roda, because you, you mentioned it. So um, I follow very closely a peace process in Colombia with the, 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 between the government and the, the organization where uh, fraction, violent fraction who were uh, occupying the, the country for 50 years with uh, this kind of civil war. And they were able to do a peace process in La Havana for years and be able to develop a plan to, to, uh, to organize. So do you think, but to be able to do a peace process, you need to have both sides understanding that violence will not go anywhere, then, then it's not going to bring a situation 
and it's not going to bring peace, and then be able to sit down and then develop a, a, a plan then both sides agree on to work on. Do you think we are close to that uh, uh, moment where uh, both sides at the, at the grassroots level could sit down and develop not just a political peace peace signing story where two president signed and then a week later it's 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 forget it so um do you think we are into that moment um i hope we're getting closer because i see here or if i can only speak for the israeli side i can see people are losing trust in uh the government policy even when people for years blindly kind of went with it, with this narrative of, of we're being attacked and now we need to do another invasion and na 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 na. And I don't think people buy it anymore because there's a lot of distrust in the government because of uh, corruption, uh, but also uh, on the level of the conflict. So I don't think we're there yet, but I think we can get there. There's, there's some movements of change going on now on a lot of levels. Uh, so I hope that uh, that will bring us to this point. Great, so fantastic. Amir, do you have the same vision or maybe not? <laughs> yeah, actually for me also, I believe that uh, people in the both side, like after all this uh, long years with the uh, violence and injustice and equality, I think uh, and then the both side uh, get tired from this uh, circle of hate and uh, violence, like and people, get more like a uh, disparate with that uh, violence will not bring more than violence and people more aware now about it. And uh, I believe uh, people just want to live uh, together on this, like in uh, equality and dignity. And so we are, we are at the end of this um, interview. Uh, do you want anything to plug, anything to, to, uh, to share with people before we, uh, we wrap up? People can always reach out to us, even if there's other questions. They want to hear more uh, about our work um, or they want to write us. They have questions or, or, or something they can write and see how they can get involved. Uh, and anyone can get involved in any kind of way. And that would be very much uh, appreciated. Thank you so much, Rosa. Yeah, also like I'm encouraging people to connect us and to try to like exploring with us all this uh, Nonviolent work and dialogue and being like in solidarity together. Like we always welcoming like people to come and join us and uh, exploring it. And um, yeah, we happy always to talk. Thank you so much to you both. Uh, and we are going out of uh, we are running out of time, and this is the end of the show. Um, thank you so much for uh, uh, watching Face to Face and keep please watching your news on Presenza.com and we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you.